That's way down. That's way down. That's way down. The Giants began the season uh, badly. The worst team in a poor NFC East. They lost their first six games until in week seven, they woke up and started playing some football. Touchdown, Ruben Randall. Hey, let's keep going, man. We flying, baby, let's fly. Their four-game winning streak ended in a close loss to the Cowboys last week. But two years ago, they won the division with a 9-7 record and went on to win the Super Bowl. So don't rule out the G-Men just yet. <laughs> Divisional rivals, the Washington Redskins, have struggled with star quarterback RG3 not reaching the heights of his spectacular rookie season. This kid is incredible. Shut that ass down, baby. Let's do it. Take that all the way to the playoffs. Let's go. Come on. A seven-game winning streak sensationally took the Skins into last year's playoffs. This is our house. It's our night. And it's our division. But with a lowly 3-7 and seven record, a loss tonight will only confirm that they're going nowhere this year. Yeah, we're going to be live from FedEx Field in Maryland, where the Giants are trying to keep their playoff dreams alive against the bitter rivals Washington Redskins. It's win or bust for the G-Men tonight. And a busy studio for you as well. Mike Carlson, Channel 4's NFL resident expert alongside us as ever. And delighted to say that a bona fide legend of British sport is with us in the studio, 64, which means that, uh, well, it's a long shot for the Giants uh, to get in, but if they are going to get into the playoffs, Mike, it's going to be by winning this division. Well, they, they would have to. Um, the wild card looks pretty much out of sight right now. The Giants have to play Seattle in one of their four remaining games. Dallas has already beaten them twice, and they've split with the Eagles, so tiebreaker-wise, they have a tough time as well. So it's really a, a slim hope. Uh, and right now, I think they're, they're playing just to put that team back together. It's been another Giants rallying enough to guarantee him another season if he wants it uh, in New York. Remember, they started the season 0-6. As we said at the top of the show, uh, this is it for the New York Giants. If they want to get into the playoffs, they've got to win tonight. So let's hand over for the first time to our commentary team for the evening. It's Chris Collinsworth alongside Al Michaels. Much of a factor tonight. Josh Morgan back to receive the kick. Temperature 43 degrees. And off we go from FedEx Field on a bouncing ball fielded by Morgan at the four yard line. Now past the 20, breaks a tackle, and then taken down at the 27 yard line as we take a look at the Redskins starters. Robert Griffin III, Baylor University. Alfred Morris, Florida Atlantic. Evan Royster, Penn State. Pierre Garcon, Haiti. Joshua Morgan, H.D. Weston Senior High School. Logan Paulson, UCLA. Trent William, Oklahoma. Corey Lichtensteiger, Bowling Green State University. Will Montgomery, Virginia Tech. Chris Chester, Tustin High School. Tyler Columbus, University of Colorado. Redskins with the number one rushing attack in the league, thanks mainly to the man lined up behind Griffin. That's Alfred Morris. Griffin will go to the air on first down and then hits Morris underneath, and they begin with a gain of 12 and a first down at the 40-yard line. And now Griffin's going to come up to the line of scrimmage and go no huddle. RG last year, as you can see, only five interceptions all season, and he rushed for seven touchdowns. This year, not running nearly as much, and 11 picks. And they run the read option as he comes to the left side, and he steps out of bounds at the 42-yard line. And, of course, Chris, everybody always looking at the right knee. He has that brace on the knee. He'd love to take it off, but the doctors won't let him. Yeah, he said the, the brace is to blame for everything, inflation in the world, <laughs> you know, whatever it is. And he is planning on taking it off next year. Had the same sort of procedure when he was in college. Wore the brace for a year after the surgery and then moved on without it. Give it to Morris. Morris to the outside, but he can't get around the corner because right there to make the tackle on the number one rushing offense in the league is Spencer Pacinger getting the start at left outside linebacker. Last year, the Redskin offense also very good. Morris was second in the league in rushing only to Adrian Peterson. And right now, yards per carry and yards per game number one. Third down and seven. They bring Roy Hallou Jr. into the game to flank Griffin. And RG protected well, and then finally it begins to break down, but he does get it away to Nick Williams. And Nick Williams hauls it in at the 50, and they're going to spot the ball very close to a first down. They have to get to almost what would be exactly the 50-yard line. They take a look. And 
and they're going to be a little bit short of the first down. It's fourth down, and the Redskins still going no huddle and lining up to go for it. Griffin under center. He's going to take it himself and then get banged back. Where was forward progress, though, is the question. And as you can see, coming in to spot the ball, the head linesman from the far side, John Beeson, makes the tackle, but Griffin did get enough picked up enough inches for the first down man I've never seen a quarterback go shooting out of a pile like that let's see how far he actually got I would say just barely over the ball and got it and again no huddle and Alfred Morris will get stacked up after he picks up three go back to the fourth down play here and see just barely across the line and then John Beeson the undeniable new leader of the New York Giants <laughs> like a cork shooting out of a champagne bottle or something thanks I'm done second <laughs> home for the night second and five at the 45 yard line off play action open over the middle is Pierre Garcon who spins around and takes the ball to the 29 yard line Garcon, their leading receiver, that's his 76th catch of the season. Good drive for the Redskins. Watch these linebackers in here. When you go to that read option, they get sucked up, and then you throw it right in behind them. And this is a pretty impressive opening drive here. This is what we've been waiting to see out of the Redskins all year. All no huddle, most of the quick snaps. Morris gets taken down after Regina about three. Pacinger again in on the tackle. Yeah, Spencer Pacinger already having an impact on the game. Jaquan Williams was the starter last week, but they really feel like in this one that Alfred Morris has to be the guy that they stop first and foremost. So the better run stuffer is Pacinger. He's in there on first and second down. Griffin out of the pistol. Short drop to the outside. Completes the pass. Breaking the tackle is Joshua Morgan. And he picks up the first down. Initially, he was going to be stopped about a yard and a half shy. It would have been third and two, but he's able to break the tackle, gets away from Hosley, and picks up the first. And the Redskins, the only team not to score on their first drive of a game, but you'd never know it looking at this drive. And Morris will go nowhere. Keith Rivers making the tackle. That was the tenth play of the drive. You almost get the feeling that they caught the Giants a little off guard with this pace. I mean, this is not just no huddle. This is a fast-paced, first sound, attacking, get after it kind of no huddle drive. Now, sometimes when it gets tough, you go between the 20s in the NFL and to make some money, though, you got to do it from here. Kyle uh, Shanahan, Mike Sun is the offensive coordinator. This time they huddle. This time they have Palou in the game. As the tailback, it is second and ten from the 17-yard line. And Halu played his college for Nebraska. Gets bounced down after a gain of two as we take a look at the giant defense. Justin Tuff, Notre Dame. Linville Joseph, East Carolina. Colin Jenkins, Central Michigan. Matthias Kiwanuka, Boston College. Keith Rivers, University of Southern California. John Beeson, the U. Spencer Pacinger, Oregon. J. Ron Hosley. Virginia Tech. Andrew Roll, the U. Will Hill, Florida. Prince of Mucamara, Nebraska. Where's JPP missing? Jason Pierre Paul. Now tonight, Michelle chronicled who was gone. So many guys on IR as well. Giants have been a physical mess this season. Third and seven. And the pass is caught inside the five and down to the two yard line is Fred Davis, the tight end. It'll be first down and goal. And Griffin has started the game four, make it five for five for 57 yards. Right here on the inside, and just nobody there to cover. Flank the running back out, and Prince of Mukamara went with him. And this is Roy Halou. There's a flag down. The Giants were trying to get off the field. There's too many men on the field for the Giants because there were two guys trying to get off at the snap. Griffin saw it. Here comes Jeff Triplett's first call of the night. This is just fantastic by the, the Redskins so far. This is the best I've seen them look all year doing anything. <laughs> Very demonstrative as he conducts the... Uh, well, he the, tries to sell the, us. ...the affair here. Offside defense. Unabated. Defensive player was in the backfield when the ball was snapped. There is no play. 
It'll be still first down and, and the, goal. There was also too many men on the field as well. Interesting. Justin Tuck, he didn't have time to get his shoes tied before this whole thing got started. But this is this is what you always sort of anticipated they could get to. And this is probably what RG3 couldn't do, missing all the OTAs and the offseason and everything he missed. So first and goal from the one. Morris and Royster both in the back here. Royster is the fullback. They give it to him. And Royster, no signal yet, is stopped a little short of the goal line. They give it to the up back. He can't get in. Second down and goal just outside the goal line. Well, Royster in the game because they have, are missing two fullbacks in this one, and that was pretty close. I don't think anybody's going to challenge anything at this point. Second down from about an inch away. They'll take one more shot here. Seven minutes into the game. It's the Redskins on a drive on which the next play is the 14th. And they give it to Morris, and the 14th play is a touchdown. Seven minutes and six seconds. They go 73 yards, nine runs, five passes. Beautiful drive. Uh, here's Big Trent Williams going to drive this thing down. And let's give uh, Evan Royster a little credit. Coming in there as a fullback, probably the smallest fullback in the history of the league, but got a good block on the outside. But the story there is the Washington Redskins, no huddle. That was fantastic. Kai Forbath for the extra points. So the Redskins, for the first time this season, score on their opening drive and do it very impressively. Watch. You can't make that cut. Your body tells you. You know, it, 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 you don't. You just listen. You know, and it, 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 it says, "I'm not going to do this." What, in terms of his comeback and getting back to the player that we saw last year, Mike, is it possible that we'll never see that player again? It's possible, but I think next year you probably will because traditionally with those knee operations take a year to get, you know, you come back and it takes, it takes a while before you're back to, to your full efficiency. Peterson's really an exception mm. to that rule and Wes Welker to an extent as well, you know, but usually it took you one, you, know, you came back maybe for a season without being as, well, most, it up most years they get the, the most um, publicity and some of the offensive positions are hard to pick up, especially wide receiver. Twitter and it's a sack. Brian Arakbo, who missed most of last year, he was hurt, comes bursting through. The Giants' offensive line has been an issue, and it is on the first play. Oh, Will Beatty just tried to jump outside, and Arakbo beats him right inside immediately. Arakbo has been red hot lately. It was Kerrigan early in the season getting the sacks, but now Arakbo with his seven and a half. The, of the season. Seventh and a half. Something like that. say that. I so, don't know. <laughs> well, you're a Florida graduate. Uh, I know. You'll straighten me out. Second down and 19. Inside handoff to Andre Brown. And Brown takes the ball to the 13-yard line. Arakbo is in on that tackle. The durable one, Eli. For years, it was Brett Farmer who had the longest streak. Then his brother Peyton had it. But he missed the whole year. Now, Eli, 147th consecutive regular season start. Third longest by a quarterback in NFL history. Be behind far of it. Peyton. And he started every game since he took over for Kurt Warner after he was drafted in 2004. It'll be interesting to see how risky they are here with their history of turnovers this week. They've this had year. a ton of them. They've got 30 this year. They'll settle for. A few yards underneath as Randall takes the ball to the 21 yard line and it's a three and out. So the Redskins who looked terrible on Monday night lethargic they had 30 total yards in the second half against San Francisco come out smoking tonight on offense and defense. I think the Redskins were ready for prime time action don't you they came out here with a purpose tonight. Santana Moss back to receive Steve Weatherford's kick. He moved a couple over 60 yards against Dallas last week in the win in the Meadowlands from the 34-yard line. Moss comes to the outside, and he is out of bounds, just shy of the 50. The Redskins will take over with good field position, 5:53 left in the quarter, and the Redskins leading seven to nothing. Got to be both these days. A lot less and a lot less effectively. 
Roy Halu starts as the running back and lines up very deep in the backfield. They toss it to him, and then they toss it back to Aldrick Robinson. And Griffin is out there to block, and he gets knocked down. But Robinson looking for the first down and comes very close to getting it. So RG was out there to block, and they knocked him backwards. And it's a nine-yard game. Well, I tell you what, the Giants are lucky that wasn't bigger than that. Rivers going to come right down here and kind of get sucked in on this whole thing. It comes around the other way, and that was it. It was like Antrell Roll or nobody else was going to make that play, and somehow he did. Now they give it to Halu again, and he picks up the first down as he takes it to the 42-yard line. The, the tip, the tip off on that play, Chris, would have been Halu was lined up so deep in the backfield. Right. You wondered what was up. Yeah, something different. You know, you were talking about the read option, though, and the difference was last year, the six-yard runs that RG3 had were 60-yard runs a year ago as they jump off sides here to start Both this. Both start. Number 83 of the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. And we've seen RG3 already take a shot on the quarterback sneak, and... He did. <laughs> I think he should not do that. No, no. He must get rolled up on by Trent Williams to tackle as well. Yeah, it, it, really, he kind of created the pile out there. I think if it had just been Trent Williams, he might have stuck around the outside. Well, there is Dan Snyder, the Hello. owner of the Washington Redskins. Hello. Alfred Morris, fake the hand. Griffin, a ton of time, but then he has to check it down. Brought by Pierre Garçon to the 41 yard line. Well, there's no doubt as much as they want to downplay the pass rush and the fact they're not getting any right now. Watch this. I mean, this is really has been the story of the New York Giants. You go back to what this team was winning Super Bowls and playing so great on defense 2007, 2008 and Tuck and Kiwanuka. They were awesome pass rushers. And now it's just not there or at least not there to that same level. Morris, six-round draft choice out of Florida Atlantic. Alfred Morris, again, kind of under the radar last year, second in the league in rushing, Redskin team record over 1,500 rushing yards as a rookie. But Griffin, of course, got all of the acclaim. And this year, this guy has a chance for the rushing title because only LaShawn McCoy and Adrian Peterson were ahead of him coming into the weekend. Yeah, and nobody thought a year ago he didn't have the starter. And Roy Hallou had had some big games. Evan Royster finished the year with some big games, and that was going to be the battle. And then Alfred Morris just kind of blew them both out of the water. Third down and eight. Check it down again. And the catch is made inside the 40-yard line by Hallou. But well short of the first down. Going to be tough for Morris to win that rushing title. After today, though, Adrian Peterson, 211 yards in Minnesota's overtime win. Tyler Columbus on the outside block and tuck. I think he might have poked him in the eye here. You could almost, well, maybe not. I thought he kind of went up to his, his own eye there. But watch Robert Griffin in this game. That's about the third time I've seen him look one way, come back another. I just think he's evolving as a pocket passer. I really think he's better than he was. Sav Rocca putting it in the air. And the Giants are going to let it bounce. And can the Redskins save it? <laughs> and they do. Great play. Volleyballed back. It was E.J. Biggers who was able to swat it back before he stepped on the line. Pulled in by Perry Riley and the Giants. We backed up at the one. All right, a bit of Stone Temple Pilots there uh, for the keen ears amongst you. Right, uh, almost, you know, too inflexible with, you know, people planning move after move. And the best teams now are coming away from that. They're saying, look, all right, well, we'll set the ball up in two or three positions thereafter. We, we make sure that we play what is in front of us and, and we run a defense wherever it's and whenever it's available. So you could, in a game where you don't have the ability to stop, start and, and rethink, you've got to really retain that flexibility. Giants okay. offense is kind of like that. <laughs> a little bit. All right, coach used to be like that, didn't he? You know, he steps in the pocket, off you go. Justin Pugh, Syracuse University. Pugh, their number one pick in last spring's draft and they're going to give it to brown on second down but he can't go anywhere as he has stopped at the line of scrimmage brian 
Rackbo making the tackle. Had an earlier sack. A minute and a half to go in the quarter. Well, somebody's got to get ahead on this guy because he's been the player. Rackpo is just coming right through. That time, Bear Pasco unable to cut him off. And now you're in a dangerous situation. Eli's going to be dropping into his own end zone. And these two outside pass rushers are legit. Rackpo, Ryan Kerrigan, and to get them blocked up the middle, Barry Cofield is a threat. Giants have run five plays for five total yards. Third down and six. And Manning will sling it incomplete. And so he'll be forced to punt. Pass intended for the tight end, Brandon Myers. The Giants with a pair of three and outs, and the Redskins figured to have the ball in pretty good position after the punt. And we have seen some uh, bad special teams plays. The Giants' yards allowed per punt return second highest in the league, and the Redskins the highest in a dubious category. Santana Moss back to receive Weatherford's kick which is a beauty deep and angled and fielded by Moss at the 34 and a great tackle is made to stop him before he can get going by Charles James Griffin and company back to work in the final minute of the quarter 7 nothing Redskins uh, I think it's Sunday Chargers and, and um, you know he used to come and tell us just exactly what they were doing and he said it was so specific that the lineman could go to the coach and say look if you want me to play uh, all four downs then I'll last eight weeks. If you three, then I'll last 12, you know, and, it, and going down because they knew. And he, he used to say the strength of these people, he'd have to take the dumbbells in two hands. Mm. He said, just totally different. When I started with England, it was very amateur still. It got a lot better. It's kicked on massively now mm. in the professional era to the extent that, that practices are properly scheduled. You know, people, uh, players know what they're doing. They know what they're doing uh, every minute of the day, etc. You, you saw that strength that you have from Justin Tuck, where, where you're holding off your blocker and, until you can actually push him and get him in the way of the play. Second and 12 as the clock goes to zero, and the pass is caught by Morris up at the 44-yard line, and that's the way the first quarter will end. Redskins scored in their opening drive and lead the Giants by a score of seven to nothing. And Sunday night football continues. After the so in general, I think no, the the, uh, the rules are pretty much as they as they should be for a quarterback. Okay, RG3 on the march. Uh, let's get back to the action. Griffin eight for his first eight, trying to stay perfect, and he will because Santana Moss bails him out with a shoot top catch and picks up a first down in the process to the giant 42 yard line. Well, here it comes, blitz coming now. We've got. That's supposed to work. Get a little pressure. Let's give it a shot. They get it picked up beautifully, though, and the one on one coverage on the back end of it is enough. RG3 almost missed that throw a little bit low, but on a night like this, when everything seems to be going his way, those catches get made. Ball now at the 42 yard line. Stays perfect again. The pass caught by Garcon. Well, RG's had a week. RG's had a whole season. I mean, he's always in the spotlight. He's the face of the franchise. He's been through the mill from time to time this year, but here they are at three and eight. And there seems to be a question in town whether he should continue to play the balance of the season or they should sit him down. Yeah, I, I think he's answering that question right here tonight. I think he's trying to end that debate going to keep it here and there he goes and he steps out of bounds at the 21 yard line but of all things then he slips on the track and goes into the wall Oof. well he deserves to be able to get up from something like that after the week he had with all the different kind of comments going there's the read option you see the Giants really focusing in on Alfred Morris big gain everything's going right this is the kind of season it's oh, been man. right there lucky He's fine. Very. The 20 yard line. Here's Morris to cut it back. Yeah, one of the things that he had to deal with this week, his father came into the locker room after the San Francisco debacle the other night. But uh, 
talking to the Redskins, they said, no big deal. I mean, said, as RG said, he said, hey, my dad came in to check on me. Yeah, he a took some, thing to do. Took some shots, and then everybody was worried his offensive lineman wasn't picking him up after sacks. It was crazy. Play action, reverse roll, but that is Fred Davis who gets knocked back by roll, and we check in with Michelle. Well, regarding RG3's dad, Brian Arakpo told me, nobody cared. We never even discussed it. I mean, it's the outside world that cares about stuff like that. When you see your son go down with an injury, it's a father being worried about his son. I've had plenty of times when my wife and my mom wanted to come to the locker room to see if I was okay. I mean, that's a father just taking care of his son. Nothing to worry about there. That's from Brian Arakpo. Michelle, as we all know, a lot of air time to fill, a lot of newspaper space to fill. Third and four. Play clock had run all the way down, and it's going to be delay of game. Delay of game. Offense, number 10. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Well, airtime, newspaper space, and don't forget social media. There's a little <laughs> bit of everything, and you know Mike Shanahan loves all that stuff, oh, I'm yeah. sure, you know, reading about his team. But it goes with the territory. Everybody understands that you win three games, you're going to get after it a little bit. But, uh, you know, this is a football team. You know, I, all I can do is go on what I see on the film. I think the improvement on this team is noticeable. They just got outmanned by the San Francisco 49ers on national television, and everybody now is ready to wipe them out. Third and nine. Griffin is 11 for 11, and even dozen right there as he hits Logan Paulson for the touchdown. So they go 59 yards, eight plays. Griffin is now 12 for 12. No, RG3 looks like he's having a flashback to Baylor or something. This is the way he used to play in college. Confident. Maybe the no huddle is something he really feels comfortable doing. This has just been absolutely brilliant. And they've been doing it really without their favorite weapon, tight end Jordan Reed. Four back for the extra point. Not only is RG3 12 for 12, he's hit eight different receivers. And we haven't even played 19 minutes. All Washington to this point. 14 nothing Redskins. Looking like a four and seven team, or worse to this point. Michael Cox is back to take the kickback, the seventh round pick out of the University of Massachusetts. And Kai Forbath will send it down there. On the run from the five down the sideline goes Cox out to the 27 yard line. Lots of issues for the Giants, Chris, and of course, one of them would be the offensive line, which was so stable and steady between 07 and 09. The Giants won the Super Bowl in that 07 season, but look at that since then. Yeah, and it's been a major factor tonight. Kevin Booth, their guard, is moving in. He's the third center that they've had to play. James Brewer steps in now and tries to man the fourth there at the left guard position. But a lot of good players. David Voss, Chris Snee, they're all gone. Jim Porter now out the backup center. And they're having a tough time running the football so far. And Pew, their number one draft choice, had nothing else getting a lot of experience in his rookie campaign. Brown turns around and drops it. Turned around a little bit late over the middle. Pass is incomplete. Giants have gone free and out on both of their drives to this point. Second and ten. The Giants have used 44 different starters. It's the most in the NFL. The record would be 50, excluding the 1987 strike season when they brought in a lot of replacement players. So 44 different guys in the lineup, and the season still has a quarter of the way to go. Kevin Gilbride, the offensive coordinator. Second down and ten. Manning and that pass is caught but short of the first down Myers gets taken down a yard shy by London Fletcher the venerable one in his 16th season. Well, here's the rookie uh, Justin Pugh on the outside. Blocking against Ryan Kerrigan you know he really struggled early in the season and 
You know, talking to Tom Coughlin, he said, I think a lot of that's a product of what they're playing in college football now. All these spread offenses, nobody really has to anchor as an offensive lineman. They were getting pushed back into our quarterback, but he's really improved since the beginning of the year. The tailback is Peyton Hillis. The Giants are seeking their first first down of the game, and Hillis gives it to him, and Hillis takes it to the 44-yard line, tackled by Merriweather. So the Giants, after the Redskins had collected 10 first downs, get their first with 10:40 to go in the half. Well, here's the center, Kevin Booth, blocking like the guard that he is, right in behind Eli there, getting a little movement on that side. But you remember Peyton Hillis, the big guy, had a huge year for the Cleveland Browns back in 2010, rushed for. Almost 1,200 yards, 11 touchdowns that season, and kind of had to call him in off the streets. They went through so many running backs yeah. this year. He actually started the season in Tampa Bay, was active in the first game of the season, but didn't carry the ball. Play clock ticks down 2 1 as the snap is taken, and the run by Hillis is a beauty all the way to the 30 yard line where he's tackled by Reed Dowdy. And leave it to Eli to hand off to Peyton. Whatever. 27 yards. Well, Ryan Kerrigan came ripping down inside on this play, and Peyton Hillis, patient enough to see it come around. They really had the perfect play call for that. And believe me, nobody wants a piece of Peyton Hillis at 250 pounds in the secondary running down through there. So you get him to there, and people, well, that's D'Angelo Hall almost got that ball out, didn't he? Hillis started his career with Denver, then to Cleveland, then to Kansas City, Tampa Bay earlier this year. And with the Giants, Andre Brown is in the backfield. And Brown flares out and makes the catch and gets tackled by Dowdy. And let's take a look at that Washington defense. Jarvis Jenkins, Clemson. Barry Cofield, Northwestern University. Kedrick Goldston, Georgia. Brian Kerrigan, Purdue. London Fletcher, John Carroll University. Terry Riley, LSU. Brian Arakpo, University of Texas. D'Angelo Hall. Virginia Tech. Reed Dowdy, Northern Colorado. Brandon Merriweather from the U. Josh Wilson, Dirty Turf, representing the Master Captain. Second down and three now from the 23 yard line. And Brown over the right side inside the 20. And Andre Brown to the end zone for the touchdown. John Connor helping to lead the way. A three minute drive. He goes 23 plays. The Giants finally got that first down and off they went with a hitless run. And now Brown takes it into the end zone. And a pull here, come down here, and there it goes. And big John Connor, the Terminator, out in front of it. David Deal, who played tackle for a lot of those Super Bowl teams. And that's what we've been waiting to see out of this Giants team. They came out kind of slumbering, but drove it right down the Redskins' throat that time. Six plays, 74 yards. Brown for the extra point. And with 8.46 remaining in the opening half, it's Washington 14 and the Giants 7. Yeah. And England, if he has to do that, winds up moving side to side, leaving himself open. And it's Joshua Morgan who downs it in the in the end zone. Well, that was a little bit of a surprising drive to watch him go right down the field against this Redskins defense that the last three weeks had really held Adrian Peterson, LaShawn McCoy, and Frank Gore in check. And then they just took off right down the field for a touchdown. There is Kirk Cousins. He came in last year when Griffin got hurt toward the end of the season, did very well, played in preseason and did very well there. The Redskins were undefeated in preseason this year. Loved by Mike Shanahan and the staff and some people in town think well maybe with RG not a thousand percent healthy it was time to sit him down but he looks pretty good tonight and so does Entrell Roll who knifes through to stop Morris for a loss of three. Well that's the first thing you do whenever a team gets their offense going you start bringing people out of the secondary and on trail roll one of the best at doing that had a little bit of a tough game last week that final drive against the Cowboys they picked on him got about four completions against them and ended up losing that one but he's coming out playing tonight on second down and 13 and to the outside goes Griffin for next to nothing John Beeson picked up after the season started from Carolina made a big difference in on the tackle well they are definitely focusing in on the dive back here's 
John Beeson here who's come over and made such a big difference on this defense smothering that read option play. It's amazing to me how much of a difference they think John Beeson has made on this defense having a veteran guy come in. He said the defensive lineman just snap now when he makes the calls and the audibles at the line of scrimmage. Third and 11. And Griffin's going to run away from trouble. Can he get the first down? He reaches out, but he's two yards shy. John Beeson forcing him out of bounds and forcing the Redskins to punt. All right, here's my issue with RG3, and I don't have many, but this is a big one. You watch Russell Wilson play. When everything breaks down like this, Russell Wilson's going to scramble to throw. Here he is. He had plenty of time outside the pocket. He could have just sat, shuffled, waited, found a big play, but he wants to run, comes up short of the first down. He should think more big play in that situation. I think on that particular play, it looked like he had enough room and for the moment, he thought he could get the first down, but he comes up a little shy as Rock is punt. Goes out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. 14-7 Redskins. Too bad they can't play the Jets every week. <laughs> what a consternation around him right now. Here is Brown to the outside. He gets taken down by D'Angelo Hall. Through the years, you go uh, Manning to Knicks and of course uh, they've had a lot of success and last year began to fray a little bit and the numbers right there tell the story well and it's a contract uh, year now for Knicks and they've got to make up their mind because if he is going to be the guy he was in his first couple years they want him back but the magic hasn't been there and players have been sitting on his routes not respecting his speed he's lost a little edge hasn't made those contested catches that's what he needs to do second and ten to the outside and that is caught by bear pasco Knicks doesn't have a touchdown in in a full calendar year none this season and down the stretch last year when the giants began to fray it almost was a precursor to what happened this year as the giants uh, folded down the stretch in 2012. well and reuben randall now is starting to come on and i think if they saw some of the competitive nature of Knicks and Reuben Randall. They might start moving in that direction. He's the guy that could step up and really be something special. Could be a player a lot like Knicks. Third and seven. Manning's going to step up and pack it in. And Eli doesn't run very well, as we all know. Biggers makes the tackle. Flag is thrown in the offensive backfield. And it's against the Giants, and Washington can decline it and force the Giants to punt. <laughs> yes, Jeff, we get it. Holding number 65 of the offense. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Will Beatty. Well, athletically, Will Beatty is the best of these offensive linemen trying to step back here and pick up a Rackpo, and he picked him up and threw him on the ground. And Santana Moss back to. Receive the punt. And Weatherford sends this one to Moss at the 22. Santana brings it back to the 28. The ball came out, but after he was down at the 28 yard line. 5 12 remaining in the half. Washington with the ball and up by seven. If you want to get in touch with the studio at C4 NFL is our Twitter handle or Facebook C4 NFL. If you're watching this on 4ID, don't bother until next week and watch the game live. Uh, we're getting lots of questions in for you, Brian, unsurprisingly. Hashtag, by the way, ask Brian or ask Mike. Uh, we can get to them quicker. That's because he's the guy in the suit. Ah, that's why we, 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 we should have scrubbed up, Mike. I knew it. I knew it. Now, uh, this is a good one from Mark Jones. It says, would Brian be better on the O-line or the D-line? Uh, <laughs> uh, what are we talking about? Football? Anyway, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, neither. I mean, the, the, I'm, I'm quite aware of this. The fact is, I'm too small. Uh, I'm not quick enough. Uh, and whilst I can throw a ball, you know, I, I'm simply too short. I couldn't, you know, line. I couldn't see where the, the lines yeah. and the trajectory of the ball would be wrong. Um, I would love to have, have played. Obviously, I would love to have tried it. But instinctively, uh, which, play, very which position do you have the most affinity with? Uh, Defence, probably. I mm. think, probably. Just, just hating people. Do you know the story <laughs> of, of Pete Dawkins in no, rugby? No, no, no. Pete, Pete Dawkins was, was a player at Army, mm. All-American, and he became a Rhodes Scholar, and he went to Oxford, 
and he played a couple of matches for his college and then went into the Oxford first 11 for you know three or four matches against touring teams and other way and then played against Cambridge mm. and against Cambridge they he in those days wingers did the throw-ins mm. and he threw it in over everyone threw it out that way he threw it in overhand with one arm like a foot American football pass mm. and they immediately said it wasn't straight <laughs> <laughs> and they did everyone they had about half of them were blown for not being straight but it was well, you play today didn't matter yeah. you just throw it away and, and, and it was it was a, <laughs> it was a sensation <laughs> right. on the front pages of the you know the papers it, the varsity match was you know, was completely overshadowed by the torpedo pass and you know within a year or two, it was standard for everybody to throw to do over it. on what, yeah, what, When was this? Pete Darvish would have been about 58, 59, you know, something like that. Was that when George, George Bush played rugby, didn't he? Did he? Yeah, he did. He played it. He did went he to really? Yale. He no, played he baseball at Yale. No, no, he definitely played rugby. I, I know it's a pity he didn't come on you. Anyway, but anyway. <laughs> George Bush Senior, is this, or, jo or W? No, W. W? Yeah. How about that? No, W was a... W was a um, that way, he threw it in overhand with one arm, like a foot American football pass, mm. and they immediately said it wasn't straight. <laughs> and they did everything. Anyway, anyway. George Bush Senior is this or, jo or W? No, W. 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 Yeah. How about that? No, W was a W was a um, yeah, the father. The father was a baseball player. He was captain of the baseball team. No, yeah. W W W. W played rugby, and um, rugby is generally in the spring in the states, unfortunately. Okay. His son was a cheerleader. Which son? Jeb. We better no, pick this up. George we better H. pick w. this up in a bit. W. W was a, the father was a baseball player, the son was a cheerleader. Okay, second yeah. and ten uh, now after that incomplete pass, the Redskins with the ball. <laughs> well, in the game, he said, absolutely, I promise. Here they fake the reverse, and he just uncorks that thing. Never a doubt about RG3 and that arm strength. From the 28-yard line on second down and ten. Good protection over the middle and stays perfect. It's a nine-yard gain to Alfred Morris. Pacinger making the tackle, and that sets up a third down and one. Al, I'm really seeing a calm in the pocket. Now, obviously, he hasn't been hit, so it's easier to be calm than it was last week when the 49ers were trying to kill him in the pocket. But you're seeing him now. I mean, I'm telling you, on almost every play so far, he has had three different looks. He looked left, he looked right. Found the check down. That's what, you know, that Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, that's what those guys do. And the up back's going to get it. And this time, the second carry for Royster, and he will be short of the first down. So Evan Royster, his second carry, the up back, and now it's going to be fourth down and one as the clock ticks down to four minutes to go in the half. And they will send in the punting group. Wow. Here's Tuck's going to come over from that side and take it on. Other from the other side that we saw. Oh my goodness! They just came and smushed that one right in the middle of the pile. That was a smush. Sav Rocca fielded at the ten by Reuben Randall. And he gets smushed at the 19. 334 remaining in the half. And Sunday Night Football being brought to you by Verizon. Holiday savings on the gifts everyone. The Redskins before he passed away. Manning to the outside throws. And that's an 11 yard gain as the catch is made by Victor Cruz. And the Giants fans salute him with the Cruz chant. Lombardi started his career with the Giants as an assistant there. 54 to 58 under Jim Lee Howell and then was the Redskins head coach before he got sick in 1969. The great one. Oh. He is uh, somebody's become a noun. Of course it's the Super Bowl trophy name for the great one is to the outside goes Andre Brown trying to get on track in Camp Barry Colefield, former Giant, making the tackle. We've got a lot of leaders on this Washington Redskins defense, but none better than London Fletcher, Pro Bowl last four years. A guy makes all the calls. You just wonder how much longer he's going to be around number 59 right there. But he has led his respective team in tackles for. 14 years. He's in second place this year to Perry Riley, but he is the man on whichever defense he plays. Iron Man almost never misses a game. Second and 11 from the 29. And 
and Eli will throw. Cruz makes the catch here. He takes the ball to the 36 yard line. It'll be third and about four. Wilson makes the tackle, and we'll see that third and four on the other side of the two minute warning. FedEx Field is the site. Washington 14 and the Giants 7. Third and four with two minutes to the half. Manning trying to keep the drive alive and tries to thread it in, and that's Nick's battling for it with Hall, who has possession. Look like simultaneous, and that would go to the offense. Those are the kind of plays we're used to seeing Nick's make, where he just out wrestles defenders for the ball, and it was D'Angelo Hall he was working against, the guy that has been a nightmare for Eli over the years, but no way to say that's not simultaneous. Ty goes to the runner. Giants have all of their timeouts. Ball at the 49 yard line. Four man rush. Manning steps up in the pocket, dumps it to Brown. Andre Brown puts his head down, will come up a little bit short of the first down. A yard short. Biggers makes the tackle. It'll be second down and one at the 40. Now it looks like the no huddle is waking up the Giants offense as they go down the field. Hey, let's go. Hey, face the 50, face and a timeout will be taken here by the Giants. <laughs> and, and everywhere else he could actually. Yeah. Are you um, both doing a season of Reno after this? 14-7 yeah. <laughs> Washington. Hillis who takes the ball to the 34-yard line, and that will move the chains with a minute and four, and that timeout is taken by the Giants. Last call for your Ask Mike, so Ask Brian. We're going to start them at halftime, and uh, the second half, just in for NFL, if you know the answer to that uh, brain teaser. Peyton Hillis flanking Manning in the backfield, stays in the block, and he, like, guns one to Brandon Myers, and forward progress will probably net him a first down and does at the spot the ball at the 24-yard line. Now the inside handoff. Hillis to the 22, gain of two. And timeout taken here by the Giants. Well, of course, Victor Cruz so much the number one offense of the New York Giants, and especially down here in the red zone, you'll see that as a slot receiver, sometimes running the fade route to the corner of the end zone is easier from the slot as opposed to doing it from outside because you have all that additional field to work with, and he and Eli over the years have created a little magic with that. So we'll see, they're right down in that range where that play becomes pretty effective. So Hicks wide, Cruz in the slot. Second and eight from the 22. So now they come out in a pure zone, so that kind of play probably not so effective. And over the middle and open and making the catch, Brandon Myers. Touchdown. Nine plays, 81 yards in less than three minutes. That's 22 yards, and the Giants yeah. a point away from tying the game. So Eli started slowly, as did the Giants, but he's now 10 out of 12 for 101 yards. Myers catches his third pass of the night and the extra point by Josh Brown ties the game at 14. Perry Riley right in the middle of the field had a tough choice to make. He opted to go to Victor Cruz's side, turned his back, you can see him right here, turned his back on the other side, Brandon Myers, and really there's just nobody there. The mere threat of Victor Cruz on the other side Left Brandon Myers wide open. Good read by Eli. Good play. Good catch. And we might end up with our best game of the year here. This one might go right down to the wire, Why brother. Here's Mike Pope, the tight end coach, who's taken a lot of tight ends over the years. Makes it work. Brandon Myers came over from the Raiders. And 
Now he's the leader. Four different guys over the last four years. Only three incompletions in the game. Two by Manning. One by Griffin. Each guy has thrown a touchdown pass. And we're locked up at 14. Yeah, it's funny, though, how sometimes that no huddle offense, we did a lot of it back in Cincinnati with Sam White when I did it, but it creates an energy on the field because, you know, let's face it, these two teams, they don't have the best record, and yet you could see they started playing ball out there. The energy level was raised up for both teams when they got into it. This is a very short kick, fielded at the 21-yard line. Hold on. And this is Adam Geddes, who is a backup center, so the chances of a good, well, who knows? We saw Conley that night in New England. Still the greatest play we've ever had on Sunday night. Unbelievable. Football. I love that. Returned to what, about 65 oh, yards? Incredible. But the facial expressions were priceless that night, too. <laughs> Carrying like a loaf of bread out right. there, swinging around. What am I doing with this thing? So the ball is at the 27-yard line, 30 seconds. Do they try to get the ball in field goal range or just take this 14-14 thing into the locker room? I think you're taking a knee here. But who knows? Mm -hmm. Nothing to lose, I guess. Maybe one more 80-yard throw. He can do it. Over the middle. It's caught. Garcon will get out of bounds up at the 31 yard line taking several seconds off the clock down to 23 right now it'll be second down and five well, Pierre Garcon we haven't talked about him so far tonight he has a chance this year to be the Redskins all time receiver most number of catches up over 100 if he stays on this pace and big physical guy well you get him running the ball he's like a fullback charging down the field but four, four tonight that's 79. On, on that 109 pace right now, second down and six. Griffin trying to get him in field goal range. And RG will take this to the sideline and a little stiff arm there as he goes out of bounds. Boy, he had a chance there. Robert, and I think he saw him. Halu was really behind the defense. He had a chance right down the boundary over here. You're going to see Roy Halu. The safety really steps up. And look, there's a chance. Throw that thing. Mm. Behind everybody, but he, you know, he wants the first down. I understand it. I just think his greatness has not been captured yet because he hasn't quite done that. He tends to drop his head, want to run the ball. He looked up, he saw it, and still ran. Those are the opportunities for game changing plays for Robert Griffin because of his scrambling ability. Third and one. And Griffin will. Completed for a first down, but that's hardly relevant right now with the clock down to nine seconds. Halu makes the catch. Hill makes the tackle. Washington takes a timeout with nine seconds left in the half. Reset the game clock for ten seconds. You know, most quarterbacks in this situation would need another completion. You would go, okay, they're going to get a ten-yard completion, and you know, then to set up the hail mary for the last one. But I think the more effective way right here might be let Robert move around, do a little bit of his thing, buy some time, because that's what you have to do. You have to allow the receivers to get 60 yards down the field. But his athleticism would let him do that and let them get down the field. And certainly his arm strength could get it there. But he wants to complete this play in less than 10 seconds. Otherwise, they'll have no time for a field goal attempt. If he throws it in the end zone, it's a touchdown. Right. It's time for an extra point. Griffin throwing caught and staying in bounds is Halu. He gets to the 40 yard line. They have a timeout and they are. Can they get it in time? The clock shows zeros. I thought they did. I, I, thought I they did definitely too. Definitely did. But I mean, that's the risk you run by staying in bounds at that point. He's trying to get into field goal range. Did he get out of bounds? Here's Triplett. Please put one second back on the game go. clock. Timeout, Washington. Their third and final. It'll be a 30 second timeout. We're still looking at a field goal of about 57 yards when we come back. Come back from the replay. No question. They had time to, to call the timeout. Everybody on the sideline is. I don't think that's even close. Now the decision comes down about trying to kick a field goal. Warbath with a long of 50 yards. This would be about what? Well, you're talking 57. about 57 yards, right, for four bath. And they're going to keep the offense back in here. 
and they'll figure they get a better shot at airing one out and getting lucky than they do on a 57 yard field goal attempt. And have an Auburn Alabama result. Yeah. Dias Kiwanuka out there on the edge to jam the receivers. All right, Griffin buying time. And uh, he's going to run, but for what purpose, I'm not sure. Now he's got to watch that track again. Giants will get the second half kickoff. Redskins had a 14 nothing lead, but the Giants have caught them. We're tied at the half. Coming up next, the Toyota halftime. He's, not, he's pretty fit. <laughs> quarterback. It might just it might just make quarterback. All right. It's gonna be, uh, be at least six foot two. Second half underway then 14 apiece could be a cracker. Stay tuned. Up as he reaches the 26 and we go to Michelle. Well the no huddle be a factor on both sides of the ball for the Giants. Tom Coughlin telling me even though his defense didn't look like they were expecting it they did know it was coming and he agreed that his no huddle energized his offense. Meanwhile for Mike Shanahan in spite of the fact that RG3 was 16 for 17 passing he wants to see more out of his running game Al. And that's a good point too because they are number one Michelle coming into the game in rushing. And it's been Griffin tonight who had that long 20 yard run 53 yards. Morris is nine carries for 11 yards. Meanwhile the Giants trying to get something going as well on the ground. They give the ball to Andre Brown and he'll cut it back the other way and then get taken down from behind. Tackle is made by Bakari Rambo. Rookie out of Georgia with a nice play six rounder. Giants couldn't do anything in the first quarter didn't have a first down. Two three and outs and then uh, 160 yards and two touchdowns in the second quarter. You know, isn't it kind of interesting that Andre Brown, you think of all the rich history of the New York Giants and running the football, could be the leading rusher on this team, only playing in three games. Pretty remarkable. You know, they just went through so many. It looks like he's hurt on yeah, the sideline. Broke now. his leg in preseason, didn't get back until three weeks ago Peyton Hillis comes in in the backfield the pass is caught on the run by Hakeem Nix after the 44 yard line so he finally is able to find Nix Nix caught a short pass in the first half and this one is good for a gain of 19. Well this is what they've done forever you know this is when Nix was on top of his game that sort of timing play we saw week after week he's a big physical guy not intimidated in the slightest to go run those routes over the middle and that's what it's supposed to look like there and trying to shake it off on the sideline Hillis is in the backfield he's the tailback take it to him and throw it to him and he'll get written down by Ryan Kerrigan for a gain of about five well the Giants a ton of injuries and they've gone through Six different starting running backs. You had David Wilson starting at the beginning of the season, and then he's on IR. Darrell Scott came in. Brandon Jacobs, they brought him back. Peyton Hillis started one game. Michael Cox even started a game in week eight. And then finally it was Brown who came back. And we'll take a look at why Brown was shaken up. So they still work on him. He's still on the sideline. It's, it's second down and four. And they give it to Hillis. And he'll come up a yard short of the first down as he takes the ball into Redskin territory. Third and one. Yeah, but this is kind of, I don't know, at least in my mind, New York Giants personality to have these huge backs. Andre Brown, Peyton Hillis, Brandon Jacobs a week ago. A guy like John Connor, the fullback, nicknamed the Terminator. We've all seen him on the Hard Knock shows and all those things. But, you know, this big physical pound you kind of offense works this time of year. Third down two from the 48 yard line. Nice pocket from Manning who throws and it's incomplete. Cruz putting his left hand up couldn't haul it in. It's fourth down. Well here's the old option route for Victor Cruz here. He gets to the top of this route. He can break in, he can break out, he can stop, or he can do that a little out and up. And let's give a little credit there to Perry Riley. A lot of guys playing linebacker don't make that play. That was pretty strong. For sure. Weatherford to punt. 51-yard average for him tonight. Santana Moss is back. 
This one with backspin on it. And fair caught at the 10 yard line. We'll see Griffin for the first time in the half when we come back. 14 all at FedEx Field in Landover. Okay. Offense and defense came from the Redskins. And that's that's changed round to, to, to a large extent. And I'm just wondering whether that's just mental or, or a reflection of the fact that they are picking better players. And he goes and he slides to a halt as he reaches the 20-yard line and picks up 10 and a first down. And Griffin tonight has carried the ball eight times. For 64 yards. There's a variation. You end up with Pierre Garçon back here as the pitch back. Now, usually you think of the read option with the Redskins, it's just RG3 running around the edge. Now they're starting to incorporate the possibility of a pitch in it. Play action. Griffin has time, but the secondary does its work. And he'll go down behind the line of scrimmage. Cullen Jenkins falling on him. You know, Aldrich Robinson was down the field, and that's where Robert Griffin wanted to go, but Hosley was on him, and he slipped and fell down, and so he had to just pull the ball down. Everybody slipped and fell down on that play. Hosley's done a nice job, though, in this game. Morris to the outside. And Morris breaks one out to the 28-yard line before he's tackled by Roll. Morris talked about it before. Florida Atlantic, second year, sixth round pick. One of the guys he loved growing up. Played for the Denver Broncos. His name was Terrell Davis, and he, like Morris, a sixth round pick. Yeah. Said Earl Campbell appreciated his game so much, sent him a jersey. I was like, you have no idea what a compliment that is, because Earl Campbell would wear people out. Alou is in the game on third down and one. And Griffin's going to keep it again, and Griffin will be escorted out of bounds by John Beeson. Picks up a first down. So Griffin doing a lot of running tonight. Nine carries, 68 yards. Here's John Beeson right in the middle, number 52, coming in. And really the focal point of this game tonight was going to be to stop Alfred Morris and stop that interior running game. So important on the outside when you've got your quarterback out and around there to make some of those blocks. Joshua Morgan doing a good job allowing that first down to be picked up. Morris back in the game from the 34. Play action. Griffin sliding, looking for room again. He's going to take off. And his 10th carry of the night is another good one for another first down before Keith Rivers forces him out of bounds. Now that was absolutely <clears throat> the right decision there because by the time he pulled that down there was no receiver on that side of the field. They tried to take a deep shot there to Joshua Morgan. You can see nobody on that half of the field. Now scramble make the play. That's nice. Griffin with four rushing first downs. He's carried 10 times for 82 yards. 8.2 yards per carry for him out of the pistol this time. And he lets Morris do the work and then Morris starts to slip down. New turf here. Remember last year, everybody was blasting what it, the condition of the playing field and thought it led to the RG3 injury in the playoff game, but uh, they're tearing it up pretty good tonight, too. Yeah, we've seen a, a few slips out there. <clears throat> no matter what you do, you try and resod that field, and all of a sudden you get, get a few of those going down. Second and six. Morris tries the right side and puts his head down. A flag is down. As he gets close to holding, a first down, holding. Number 63 in the offense. Ten-yard penalty, still second down. And that is Will Montgomery who costs them a first down. Well, it's interesting. Will Montgomery's had a pretty good year. I, th I think that the Redskins came in with the thought that maybe they would move Corey Lichtensteiger from guard to center, and Josh Arebus was going to get the start at guard. But Arebus came in about 60 pounds overweight. And shot that plan down. So they put Will Montgomery back in there, and he's done a nice job for him. Redskins, the only team in the league to have the same quarterback and five offensive linemen start every game this season. A couple of the teams with the five linemen, like Philadelphia, but they've changed quarterbacks. Obviously, with Vic to Foles, who's doing a pretty good job. Second and 16, the pass to the outside is caught by Logan Paulson. And Paulson with a flag thrown. Is out of bounds into the Giants bench. 
and then a flag in the bench area. She had one during the play and one after the play. And Santana Moss was pretty much just blocking down the field on that play before the ball was thrown. That can't be legal. Tom Coughlin, Mike Shanahan, boy. They go back a, a lot of years, uh, of course, from different venues, Denver and Jacksonville. Two fouls on the play, holding number 89 in the offense. That penalty is declined. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 89 of the offense. That foul occurred after the play. It will count, the play will count. It will be third down after a 15-yard penalty from the dead ball spot. Santana Moss, both calls. There he is right here. We'll see. He comes off and... He's working against Terrell Thomas and a little push at the end and then whatever happened from there <sighs> Tough to see Moss exasperated He was yelling at the ref and yelling at the official That's your second flag play <sighs> Counts but the penalty is assessed and thus it brings it back to a third down and 18 third and 18 from the 40 yard line and the pass over the middle is caught and this is Pierre Garçon who gets tackled at the 43 yard line and the Redskins will punt talking about those two coaches that they, they matched up in one of the greatest upsets in postseason history when Shanahan was at Denver and had a great team in 1996 and the Jacksonville Jaguars were in their second season coached by Tom Coughlin and Jacksonville went into Denver and stunned the Broncos. Of course, over the next few years, the Broncos would go on to win back-to-back -back Super Bowls. And now you got another penalty. False start, number 55 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. It's Nick Barnett, longtime Packer, playing on special teams. I tell you, pretty impressive though that the Giants have been able to will their way back into the game. Looked like they were going to get blown out of the water early on, and they've just sort of stabilized and now get a chance to go play for the lead. The first 18 or so minutes of the game it was all Washington. Randall says, "Let it go," but then he picks it up on a hop, spins away, but not for long, and down goes Reuben at the 15-yard line. So the Giants get the ball in a tie game with 6:41 left in the third. If they can keep him for another year, he'd be a good backup quarterback, you know, because you can start him. You know? All right. Dan Snyder, who's owned this team since the late 90s, inherited North Turner, who got him to his one playoff appearance in 99 when they beat Detroit in a wild card game. Giants at the 15 yard line. Andre Brown is back in and takes the toss. And sifting through the trash, and the Giants had a couple of blockers out in front. Barry Riley helping to make the tackle along with Rambo. Mike Shanahan, 6 and 10 when he took over, then 5 and 11, then that great run last year when they got hot. They won their last seven. Met Seattle in the playoffs, and that's when Griffin got hurt this year, 3 and 8. And been a rough road for Mike with Griffin getting hurt last year, and the salary cap hell that this team has been under because of violating the salary cap restrictions in the uncapped year of 2010, a $36 million penalty. And that's caught. And making the grab is Pasco. And of course, what that means, Chris, is you, you, you have that much less to spend, which is one of the reasons the Redskins went out and got almost nobody in free agency last year. Yeah, I don't know how you get a salary cap violation in an uncapped year. Somebody's still gonna have to explain that one to me. But you're talking about they won the NFC East for the first time in 14 years. You talked about the salary cap. RG3 coming off the knee injury, no offseason work. They're currently the number one ranked rushing team, seventh ranked offense, on pace for the most yards. This is a team going in the right direction. I hope that whatever they don't change course, because I think they're going to win the division next year if they stay with this. Third down and two. And Manning throws, and that's intercepted. Picked off by Brandon Merriweather. And he's got blocking, and he takes the ball all the way down to the 12-yard line. Brandon Merriweather over the middle, and 
that's Eli's year kind of in a nutshell shaking his head a ton of interceptions some his fault some not a lot of tip balls whatever he gets picked again well first of all this is the way it's supposed to work you get a rack pole around the edge and then you get pressure up the middle so Eli can't step up in the pocket that's Cofield in his face he ends up lobbing it a little high the ball gets tipped and then Brandon Merriweather, a little good news for him, a guy who's probably been fine more than any safety in history over the years. So 15 touchdown passes for Manning and 18 interceptions. Giants a turnover in every game this year. Alfred Morris is the running back with Griffin out of the pistol from the 12-yard line. Lead option again. Keeps it. And he gets... Forced out of bounds by Will Hill near the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it's an interesting play, and I think they're just getting good at it here. And actually, Robert Griffin could have forced this action a little bit better. You're going to get the pitch back coming again, but watch if RG3 goes inside this man right there. You either run it or force Antrell Roll to tackle you, then you can make the play or the pitch. He's rolling to his right. He's being chased. He throws behind the intended receiver. That was Paulson, and Justin Tuck put the pressure on. It'll make it third down and eight. You know, it, it's interesting. Justin Tuck's not going to be fooled, but Kevin Gilbride over there with Eli Manning. It has just been a nightmare season for a group that has been so good at protecting the quarterback over the years that not having the crucial turnovers in the late in the game in the fourth quarter, and it just has gone the other way on him this year. Averaging more than two and a half per game. No other team in the league is within five turnovers of the Giants. That's how bad it's been. Third down and eight from the 10. Griffin over the middle throws, and that's almost picked off, and he gets lucky there. Prince of Mukamara going down to try to pick it. The throw was so low that even Mukamara couldn't it's, pick it off. It's fourth down. It's got to be a flag comes down at the, end, at the end of the play. Yeah, Pierre Garçon just kicked the ball in the stands. Yeah, well. I mean, at the end of this play, drop, and he just, boom. I mean, that was no amateurish kick. That thing went about 20 rows up. Boy, I tell you, they had a chance with the Mukamara to make it, get a ball right back. Well, if it costs him 15 here, it, it takes a chip shot field goal and makes it uh, mini mysterious. It's clearly within four bass range. After the play is over, delay of game offense, number 88. Kicking the dead ball out of bounds. It's a five-yard penalty, and it will be fourth down. So delay of game is better than unsportsmanlike because it only costs you five and not 15. Yeah, and you could tell that RG3 thought Garcon was going inside Amukamara and just got fooled on the play. He came to the outside, and I've got to say, I think RG3 is right. That's exactly where Garcon should have gone. 33 yard attempt by Forbath is good. So the Merriweather pick pays off with a field goal, and Washington has the lead again. In the years to come. <laughs> Drops it at the three and collects it at the one and gets tackled at the 10 yard line. So Manning will take over at that spot, 17 14 Redskins. All right, them. still got plenty. Fumbled very often, but the final score was 17 to 10. Brian's back. You can show us now. <laughs> it doesn't matter. The game's getting underway. Three Saints Panthers on Sunday Night Football next week. See if that great defense can win down there. Here's Manning from the 10 under pressure. Had him by the shirt, and the pass is incomplete. He's second down. Carolina. Start of the season one and three, and people are wondering what's going on. Is Ron Rivera in trouble? Right now he's the coach of the year. Nine and three. Eight straight wins, 13.1 points allowed per game. That's best in the league. And Cam Newton has been on fire. Well, you can say anything you want about Ron Rivera, but the man can coach defense. Wherever he's been, they've been dynamic on the defensive side of the ball. 
That time, uh, the Redskins got after James Brewer, the new guard for the Giants, and took advantage of him with a stunt. And this is Brown, and he can only pick up a couple of yards, and Andre a little slow in getting up. Playing in only his fourth game, Cofield makes the tackle. Nine carries, 30 yards for Brown. One of the better players here on the Redskins is their nose tackle. And there's no doubt this is a defense that's built around the two outside linebackers, Kerrigan and Arakpo, and the center and the uh, nose tackle, Barry Cofield. Because as you fan out to block those outside guys, it leaves him one-on-one -on -one with the center. And more often than not, Barry Cofield wins those battles. Three and a half remaining in the third quarter. Third and eight. Got him. Down he goes at the three-yard line. Racco and Cofield both in on Eli. Well, Arakpo is just killing Will Beatty tonight. I, I mean, I, it, it, there's no other way to say it. Coming over here, and he's just eating him alive. He even had help on that one. Had an outside chip, and that drives coaches crazy. Will Beatty on that play knew he had help to the outside, and he got beat to the inside. That's when you said hard inside, use your help. That's a big mistake by Beatty. The time that Eli has been sacked. This season, good kick by Weatherford, fielded by Moss at the 39-yard line. And he will be taken down by Hill and his friends at about the 45 is where they will spot it. 239 left in the third. Redskins up by a field goal. The Washington defense turning the screw a little bit on the Giants, Mike. Yeah, and we saw, you know, Peyton's interception was was really the classic this season. What's wrong with the Giants? Just a bad throw. Mm. Um, Brandon Merriweather in their Giants defense, though, stepped up, and and the penalty was was an interesting one because we called it here. I was saying, bad penalty, penalty, mm. kicking the ball, and they were lucky to only get the um, delay of game call. Mm. But very similar to the Pablo Prigioni kick from the basketball court that got me in the head. <laughs> Although that was one after the, the game, not during the game. If you haven't seen that, please, the game's got underway. We'll get back to it, 17-14. And picks up a yard to the 46-yard line. You know, the other part of that equation is Ozzy Umanura, who wanted more money or more respect or whatever it was that he wanted to have going. And, and they go back and watch the tape when they, he was playing with them, and they said the difference in the speed getting off the ball was noticeable without Ozzy Umanura in this lineup. What's the difference between money and respect? Here's Halu. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. I get a lot of respect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He answered the question. That's Third and nine. <laughs> but that's, now they're trying to go back to that no huddle a little bit and pick up the pace a little bit. But this has been a team, and, and there's a guy, Demontre Moore, you just saw number 98. They thought he was going to be the replacement for OC. But he really has not been. He just has been one of those guys they haven't been able to depend on him on a weekly basis to make contributions. A little immature. Three receivers stacked to the left side, and Griffin's going to go down. And this time, Tuck is able to break through and knock him down in the pocket. Well, this goes back to the days here where... Justin Tuck was inside, talked about him in the Super Bowl, the same thing he did to Tom Brady, T put him inside, let him play against the guard. He gets there in a hurry. I, I, in my opinion, that's still where he plays best. That's where I would play him a lot. So second sack and a, a low snap, and then he's able to get the kick away, but it's a very short, ugly little boot that will roll dead at the 44-yard line. Now, it's important to remember now, there's no roughing the kicker after that ball hits the ground. You can do whatever you want. Looks like there might be a hold as they desperately tried to survive that one. But once the ball's on the ground, no such thing as roughing the kicker at that point. Kyle Nelson was the snapper. Boy. Holding. Number 40 of the kicking team. That 10 yard penalty will be added to the end of the kick. First down, New York. So that's Nelson with a bad snap and a hold. The 
regular long snapper Sundberg is on injured reserve. That one didn't have enough to even get there. Rocca had to step up and then step back in order to get it. That's bizarre. It's almost amazing to me uh, that that can happen on a play. You know, it just, I, I guess sometimes it just slips out of your hand, huh? That's a, it's on yeah, me. Yeah. yeah, I would say. Which one? <laughs> so a bad snap and a hold. Giants get 10 extra yards, puts the ball at the Washington 46 yard line. Peyton Hillis in the backfield next to Manning. And Eli gets it away. It's Cruz who picks up eight yards, tackled by Josh Wilson. Well, we've been talking about him all night, but Brian Arakpo has been a force. Started off the first play of the game, jump inside, get a sack there, but it's been in the running game as well, hammering down against Andre Brown and making that stop. Going hard inside to get Brown going the other direction. It's tough when you can't stop him in any direction. 20 seconds left in the period. Second and two. It's a first down. It's Brandon Myers has gotten loose a number of times over the middle. Has one touchdown grab tonight. That's good for a first down. And that will take us to the end of the third quarter. With the score Washington 17 and the Giants 14 with Sunday Night Football resuming after these messages. Yeah, okay. it's hard to argue in, in an individual sport that you're better that you're better than somebody who has consistently won more than you have. Down throws caught and it is Cruz who's trying to take the Redskins into the end zone and he is just short. D'Angelo Hole for the moment keeping him out of the end zone. And another flag gets thrown at the end of this play. So Cruz fighting and the Redskins fight in to keep him out. They were able to do that for the moment. And Jeff Triplett ambles over for a discussion. Boy, what, what a great play that time by Eli Manning. They had a sort of fake screen pass to the right side, came right back, and Cruz stayed alive and almost scored. After the play is over, unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 23 on the defense. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Well, if you ever have to get a penalty called, the half the distance to the goal, that's the one. From the four-inch line to the two. Everything on this play is happening out on this side. They tried to go fake screen to the wide receiver, but give Cruz credit. He kept hustling on the play and was there. And then an old moster. Boy, he just about backed his way in the end zone. What are you? Andre Brown is the running back. Can he take it in? No. That second thrust, not enough. And let's see, one official's coming in. The headlinesman with, with a touchdown call, and he does rule him across the goal line. And Shanahan will take a look. Of course, he doesn't have to, there's no challenge here. Every scoring play will get reviewed, and they will look at it upstairs. Does he get in? Yeah, I think he's lying on the defender here. I don't think anything ever hit the ground. Comes the tackler in there, we were Robinson. The previous play. And he reaches out without ever touching the ground. Remember, if it's a shin, if it's an elbow, it's a wrist, he's down. I don't think any of them were down. He was on Trent Robinson. So take a look at it. For the moment, the Giants have to leave. All right, and this could be absolutely critical. Let's uh, take a look at it again. Mike, what, how did you read it? Well, I, I thought it was a touchdown, to be honest. And Take a look now, because, well, if it was a dirt stain on it before he hits the ground, so he must be down. See, he's down yeah, there. Down here. He's down there. So that's it. it won't and just be for the, the newbies watching, uh, as well as mirrored the first off to some degree, the, the Redskins started it more strongly. Right, let's get back to NBC and find out how this one's going to go. can't see that. They, they can then look at the other angle from the goal line and stitch the two things together to try to determine if he got in or not. Well, there's other angles here where you may be able to see something, but from that one, can you definitively say that that knee is on the ground? Because when you look at it from the other angle, from behind that, I think it looks like it's not. But at the very least, it would be inconclusive in my mind. I think here comes Triplett. <sighs> 
After review, the ruling on the field stands. Which, let's explain, stands means that there was nothing conclusive. If he had said is confirmed, that means I absolutely saw that. When he says stands, it means there's not enough evidence for me to overturn it. It all started with that bad snap on the punt, gave the Giants a short field. They go 46 yards in four plays, and for the first time in the game, the Giants have the lead. The Redskins led 14-0. The Giants caught them at the half. Washington then led 17-14 until right now, and Josh Brown, 34 seconds into the fourth quarter, makes it a four-point game. New York 21, Washington 17 on Sunday Night Football. It's interesting, we were just chatting, Andy, our director, Brian, brought the point up that in rugby, shouldn't there, you get the respect of the players and it's self-policing. Yards in. Morgan. Taken down at the 22 yard line by Mark Perslick. And take a look at the playoff picture right now in the NFC. Seattle with the best record in the conference. New Orleans second, and they'll meet tomorrow night. And Carolina and San Francisco at the moment in the wild card spots. Philly and Arizona right there. Chicago losing today in overtime. Green Bay gets Rodgers back. And uh, St. Louis and the Giants are still mathematically alive. Washington is actually mathematically alive, and uh, they'd be done if they lose tonight. First and 10 from the 22-yard line. Griffin under pressure. Look out from behind. And they get him from behind. And that's Justin Tuck chasing him down. It's really the interior pressure initially and then around the outside Justin Tuck is going to run this thing down Alfred Morris with a pretty good block but once again we see RG3 maybe a year ago that's a long run this year seems like we've seen more of this Justin Tuck's had a nice second half hasn't he yeah as soon as we started putting up those sack stats and all that stuff Third sack for the Giants and second for Tuck. Griffin's going to keep it and then flip it at the last moment to Santana Moss up to the 29 yard line. He goes. And that'll make it to third down and three after a gain of 10. How about that? The wide receiver now is the pitch back. Santana Moss out here in the slot is just going to fade back here and be the pitch guy. Is Robert Griffin comes around the outside. Pretty good block down the field there by Logan Paulson as well. But they have done some creative stuff now with this read option. Griffin under pressure again, and down he goes again, and there's Tuck for the hat trick. A little assist on that as well as he's able to clean up Kiwanuka. Helped to create that. He put the early pressure on, and it's fourth down. And it was really a coverage sack, no matter how you want to look at it. Did not find Garcon on the outside. Here's Santana Moss covered by Thomas. Wouldn't have thrown that one either. And Joshua Morgan covered on the outside as well. So the defense of the Giants now taking over. Rockies kick. Field at the 30 yard line by Ruben Randall. To the 42 and the ball comes out but after Randall was down so tuck with three sacks third time in Justin's career he has done that in one game and the Giants have a four-point lead and the ball early in the fourth quarter all right then we'll squeeze in another highlight now uh, it wasn't necessarily a particularly significant game well, Ryan, I think ugly. is still a quality quarterback Taking the lead by four, and they start this drive from their own 43-yard line. Protection is terrific, but then the pass is incomplete. Perry Riley was back there covering Andre Brown. Good coverage by the uh, secondary and the linebacker, second down to 10. Well, here's Bobini one more time. 
And he holds up pretty darn well right there. That's uh, the only reason that Eli was able to run around and make that play. But it's Perry Riley, definitely one of the most athletic linebackers in the NFL, keeps getting better. And he's made a couple of nice plays in pass defense so far out here tonight. Second and ten to give it to Brown and an inside give. Andre Brown. <laughs> this is a guy who's been through, he's been through everything. Giants drafted him initially, got hurt, got waived, went to Denver, went to Carolina for all, went back to Denver. He was telling us the story a couple of years ago. He said, my luggage couldn't even catch up with me. <laughs> I left stuff all over the country, but I picked up a lot of hotel points. Broken legs and IR scheduled to come back and has come back and really given this team a lift. They took the full three weeks to get him ready. He said they needed it, but he has answered the bell since. Third and ten. Hit as he throws, and he's able to convert on third and long to Cruz. Victor Cruz makes the catch at the 44-yard line. Barry Cofield came in and put a lick on Manning, but he got it away. Well, anytime you see your guy go as a quarterback, that would tell me I'm going to that guy because inevitably get some of these voids in the zone and behind that. Good job by Eli under pressure, hanging in there and delivering a big strike there. 10.50 left in the fourth from the 44. And here's Brown inside handoff, and he can go nowhere. Perry Riley, 56, stopping him at the line of scrimmage, second down and 10. They've really been lining up London Fletcher really deep and almost like a, a coverage kind of situation. So you know Eli has been tempted to try and just hand this ball off, but we've been seeing London Fletcher line up a good eight, nine, sometimes even 10, 12 yards deep in certain situations. They've been trying to attack that area of the field underneath them. Blitz coming, and they get him. So they send everybody that time, including Josh Wilson from the corner to Barry Eli. Now this time the corner blitz works. Going to work in right, I think it's off the left side, in here this way. That just came the other way. As he comes in through there, but you almost could tell based on London Fletcher being up around the line of scrimmage that something was up and London Fletcher almost got there as well. 12 yard sack, third and 22. Pressure on again, set up the screen to Brown. And Brown will be dragged down as he crosses midfield. Washington will get the ball back. Rob Jackson makes the tackle. It'll be fourth down and 14. We'll give Jim Hazlitt some credit dialing up a blitz like that in a pressure situation. They had to stop that drive and get the ball back for their offense. Took a chance and it paid off for them. Moss is back inside the 10 yard line. Weatherford. This will be a sixth punt of the game. Put the heat on. Gets it away. Moss makes the fair catch at the 11-yard line. Eight and a half to play in regulation with the Giants leading the Skins by four. Line. And this is Griffin keeping it for a gain of four. Griffin tonight has done a lot of running. 88 yards on the ground, 12 carries. Yeah, it's interesting that for the New York Giants and their defense, it really seems like since they started experimenting a little more with Justin Tuck coming down inside, playing that defensive tackle instead of the end position that they've picked up defensively. Griffin to the outside, and the pass is caught. Pierre Garçon makes the catch. And that's a first down. Well, now we're getting into that passing 
portion of the game and Jaquan Williams now has come in for Spencer pacing or maybe get a few blitzes coming a little bit of man coverage because for Jaquan Williams that is his strength and one of the things they were a little afraid of was Jordan Reed the outstanding young tight end for the Redskins but he's out of this game and uh, that certainly has been a factor with the Redskins passing game Only seven yards passing out in this half and and there is suck again coming from behind he'll get at least a partial sack there so he's had three tonight already and we'll see what they credit him with here as he comes from behind well you're gonna see Columbus go out here to pick up the blitzer and nobody takes Justin Tuck I mean this, this is just his night tonight I mean, it's one thing to go, okay, we got a blitzer coming, we got to take advantage of it, but I'd rather you block number 91 first. I'll worry about one of those 20 numbers coming at me later. And they give him a full sack on that. Got a little bit of help at the end, but that's four tonight for him. Second down and 13 from the 23. And that's just dropped, flat out dropped by Garcon. Third down and 13. You know, it's kind of the way it goes sometimes when you only win three games and come up at the end of the game and you need big clutch plays. You blow a protection first, you drop a pass next, and sometimes you just have to have that one guy that can make a play in a clutch situation. And boy, here we are, third down and 12, and somebody needs to step up for this football team. Griffin sliding to his left and way too high. And fourth down, Aldrich Robinson was the intended receiver. A little stunt come around and like this to put some pressure, but really it gets washed down. Good job by Lichtensteiger. So plenty of time here. Robert just rushed that throw. I thought he had a chance anyway on that crossing route, but it just sailed on him. Rock is kick. Randall's going to come up and pull for a fair catch on a short punt at the 39 yard line. Six and a half left. Giants by four. Might be touching it with Bromit. It didn't really get a chance to get into the pressure on, on that catch. Yeah. Okay, 17, 21-17 uh, to the Giants. And now the Giants launched up in the line of scrimmage. Carried a half dozen times tonight for 46 yards. Reuben Randall is in the game. You know, we were talking to him last night, the Giants receiver, second round pick last year out of LSU. So he they bring him into the draft. He doesn't get drafted the first day. His father says to him the second day, he says, man, he says, it's just too cold here in New York. Get drafted already so we can get out of here. So who drafts him? <laughs> New York. Don't get to get out of there. Okay, Dad. <laughs> Dad hasn't been back since, I don't think. Uh, Dad's learned to put an overcoat on and enjoy uh, the East on second down and 10. And speaking of Randall, go. there he is. He lost the ball, but is able to gather it back in. Just short of the first down. You know, sometimes even when you do things right, that time Ryan Kerrigan dropped right in the middle of the field to be the sort of lurking guy to wait on plays like this, and he runs right by him. You know, I mean, that's that's what they want for Kerrigan. But for Reuben Randall, boy, would they love to see him start making those kinds of plays. They think he has a lot of potential to be a star. He just has to answer it. Emerson came close to creating a turnover. Third down and one for the Giants as Eli who ha has his leg in somebody's grasp, hits Myers, and that's going to be enough for a first down on forward progress. Chris Baker had his arms around Eli's leg, and he was still able to get it away. Well, Chris Baker slides down there and tries to do one of those where you slide the tablecloth out from underneath you. He's got his leg. Now watch, him going to pull it right there, and somehow Eli still gets that thing out of there for the first down. You got to be careful with Eli when you think you've got him. You learned that in the Super Bowl, too. Great big, play. Big, big play. Not only the conversion, who set it down, so they can start to milk some of the clock here. Oh, and I think Mike Shanahan's going to challenge that one. He might challenge the spot 
because if he's not touched going backwards, catches the ball Washington and comes is back. Washington challenging the ruling on the field on the first down. Under the hood goes Triplett. I didn't see it, did you? <laughs> did you hear that? No. The, uh, Chris just said, I didn't see it. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Um, um, just, Justin Tuck, yeah. you see, he's contemplating the momentum that he's built up there. <laughs> By the way, uh, we did it, uh, only did some ask marks. We'll try to get through a few more before the end of the show. Uh, this is a great one. I was just dipping onto our Facebook page, C4 NFL, if you want to follow the community there or get involved with the community there, I should say. 26, this would take them down to two timeouts. Plus the two minute warning, but first things first, that defense has to stiffen here. You know, it's interesting. They always blame the head coaches, and usually the head coaches never see it. Triple. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The runner caught the ball beyond the line to gain and was pulled back. The forward to progress spot is correct. Washington is charged a timeout and their first challenge. I think you're exactly right. I think somebody upstairs saw the bobble, said, you know what, we got a chance here. Obviously, big third down. You would have forced the punt. Sure. I mean, you understand why you would like it to happen, but there just wasn't any evidence to uphold it. So the ball right at the 50 yard line. And Manning off the play fake and then wide open as he goes to the left side is Cruz, who's so good. After the catch, and he proves it again there as he has throughout his career. And Cruz with a big gainer, a gain of 22 yards, first down. What a route by Victor Cruz. Watch this. He turns D'Angelo Hall. He got his blind spot. You know a blind spot when you're driving right, you can't see? For a defensive back going down the field, there are certain spots when he turns his head, he can't see you. That time Cruz took advantage of it, came back afterwards and just left D'Angelo Hall still running down the field. That's the second time backside Victor Cruz has made a big play. From the 28. Brown, tough night for him. Stop just uh, as he gets to the line of scrimmage, maybe a little bit beyond. Merriweather there for the tackle. Brown, 13 carries for only 31 yards. How about Tom Coughlin, though? You know, here's a guy, this team starts 0-6 in New York. How tough is that? Because you know you're going to get beat up. Somehow he pieces this thing back together. He's down 14 to nothing to start this one. His team keeps fighting back and finding a way, and they just don't give up. I mean, you have to give that man a lot of credit. His team reflects him. Did a tremendous job in Jacksonville at the start of that franchise. John Mara, it's a very solid and steady ownership situation as it has been the Mara family in New York and then the Tisch family buying in in the early 90s as Washington has just taken a time now they got to start conserving the clock here on the front side of the two minute warning so they're down to just one after they lost that challenge second and ten There's a toss to Brown and Brown threads his way for a short gain and Washington here is going to take its final timeout. So the 323, they're out of timeouts. Meanwhile, next week, I said that's what we love about the flex schedule. Originally it was going to be Atlanta Green Bay, but it's Carolina and New Orleans that you're going to see on Sunday night football. That's going to be very exciting. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those games that I'm really anxious to see this New Orleans offense and all that they do with Drew Brees throwing around. We've been down there and it almost looks like nobody could beat them in that building. But now we're going to bring the number one defense down there and take their shot. Big heavyweight fight. It's going to be fun to watch. Next and week. career, but uh, it'll be Newton. It'll be Brees. It'll be rocking at the Superdome on Sunday Night Football. Third down and six here. Big blitz look coming from the Redskins. Great cover zero man to man. We'll see if they back out or not. Nope, here they come. And the pass is caught. And this is Randall, but he's going to get tackled in the 21-yard line. 
So the Redskins take all of their timeouts, take the two that were remaining. Fletcher makes the tackle. Clock ticking down. And now you got uh, limping away was Fletcher. And the Giants send in the field goal unit. Watch London Fletcher sprint out of here. Now he saves the first down. There's not a doubt in my mind. This one is just about to break. And London Fletcher, as he's done throughout the course of his career, just refuses. And Eli said, oh, we got it. I can't get away from number 59. Great, great hustle play to keep the Redskins in this one. 39-yard field goal attempt by Brown to make it a seven-point game. And Josh Brown's yep. kick is just good. Boy, it started to veer outside and just made it. So with 232, a screwball. That's a double veer. It veered right, and then it veered back left again. It's like it's going to be good, and it's, there it goes, and well, here it comes, the other. <laughs> and it goes over the upright, so you cannot review that. Nope. If it goes below or even with that upright, anything down there, you can review that. But once it gets over the upright, strictly a judgment call by the official. And over the upright is good. So they work on Fletcher on the sideline, but a big stop there for the Redskins using their timeouts, keeping it as a one possession game. And we can tell you to download NFL Mobile, get live premium content like Sunday Night Football. Territory throughout, no doubt, four down territory throughout now. Morgan fielding it and thought about coming out with it, and that ended that as soon as he dropped it in the end zone. RG3, no timeouts, two and a half minutes from the 20. Started out on fire tonight. Great first drive. Let him do a touchdown early in the second quarter. Only missed one pass in the first half. Had a, a long bomb downfield, but they've bottled him up here and sacked him five times. Four by Tuck. There he is. There's Tuck here in the second half. Well, there's no question Tyler Columbus is going to have his hands full. That's a position I'm sure they'd like to upgrade a little bit on this offensive line, and he's going to get tested here. Say goodbye, Columbus. <laughs> no, never mind. Stop it. Oh Pass is dropped at the 26 by Logan Paulson. You know, just the, this is the right read. You get a blitz coming off of that side. You get Logan Paulson making the read. RG3 sees it, comes back. Makes a good throw and another drop pass. Griffin only six incompletions tonight. I think about four of those were drop balls. Second and ten. Underneath the Halu. Halu looking for that sideline and picks up seven yards. It'll be third down and three run out of bounds by Hill. Well, Roy Halu is a guy who was the second fastest running back at the combine his year. So they like him in the no huddle offense. They feel like just like that, they can get him the ball in space and just let him work some going down the field and maybe more opportunities to come for him. Sure Kyle Shanahan is called in on third down and three. And they convert, but then the ball comes loose, and it's incomplete. He never had control of it. Barson gets hit by Hosley, and it will be fourth down. You know, there are times in a game when you make the catch and try and run. There are times that you just make sure you make the catch. And that was one of them. So now you bring up a fourth down as the drops continue for the Washington Redskins. This is a mobility time for Robert Griffin as well. This is when his running often will come into play. Fourth and three. And this time they do convert. This time Paulson, all he can think about is just making that catch, securing the ball. Then he gets out of bounds. So with 2-10 remaining, it's a first down at the 36-yard line. Bit of a gift on fourth down. Absolutely nobody in the flat there. Fourth down, you'd like to, if you're going to leave somebody that wide open, you'd like to at least get some pressure. That was just a four man rush. Somebody should have been in the flat. They blew that one. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. 
low snap gets it away. Garcon here to the 41 yard line tackled by Kiwanuka which takes us to the two minute warning. Two minutes left it'll be second and five from the 41 when we come back. 24 17 Giants. And um, to RG, obviously, and in Kaepernick's case, I think it's it's adjustment to a sort of new system that they're trying to run. And I'm I'm not sure if you can make enough of the the lack of receivers, because look at look at what you can do, say in Washington, with with new receivers. Okay, then RG three on the drive. Uh, it's the game on the line. First down. Going to be spotted. Sharp are going to move the chains. Here goes Griffin. Obviously running the hurry up, throws to the 30-yard line, and it's dropped at the 30. Entrell roll on the hit of Fred Davis. Boy, Fred Davis used to be such a weapon around here in Washington. Just three catches so far this year and had a chance to make a huge play for this team. Meanwhile, they, they really screwed this thing up. You can't do that. Well, they did. Now he just said fourth down because I told you we, we, we saw it. It was short of the first down. The, the chain gang moved into first down position. Then Triplett comes in after the play and says they didn't get the first down. I don't blame Mike for you, being you crazy can't about do this. that, though, because you don't run that play if you know Ab what the down is. You can't Absolutely. go back like that. It's four, fourth down. It's stripped away by Will Hill. And the Giants are going to get the ball after a completion. Now it comes loose again. Screwed this up anymore, the officiating crew. That is just brutal. You go back to that play where it's not a first down. Somebody signaled the first down. It's one of the officials. They moved the chains. It wasn't. Creates a different play call. You go back to this play now where Pierre Garçon gets it taken away by Will Hill and the Giants are going to wind up running out the clock if this stands. This is professional football. This is where you're supposed to get those things right. And when you're a play caller, you make a different call if you think it's third and one versus first and ten. It is absolutely blatantly unfair to the Washington Redskins what happened. It's there. insane. They moved the chains. The down boxes both said first down. We said when we called the end of that play, he's close to a first, but it was close enough to clearly measure. And then Triplett comes in and says fourth down. You cannot do that. It's the no. whole thing. We've seen it over and over. Once the next play is run, a mistake that was made, you live with it. It doesn't matter what it is. I mean, let's give Will Hill and let's give the Redskins or the Giants credit for making a play like that. But Mike Shanahan is absolutely right. That is, that's, it's crazy. A thousand percent. Never seen anything like it. Well, Mike Tomlin's not the only guy who could get fined tomorrow. And that's the way it's going to end. In a wacky ending. What else is new? We've had wacky endings uh, all week. And Eli will walk away from a come from behind victory. Griffin looked so good early on within the Giant defense was so great in the second half. Four sacks for Justin Tuck. A major officiating screw up at the end. And the Giants stay alive. Washington is mathematically eliminated. All right, what you had, you had a second down play that was short of the first down as we looked at it. We were calling it as close to a first, but it looked like it was short. One of the officials signaled to the chain gang to move the sticks. The down boxes went to first down, and they're running a first down play on what was should have been a third down in inches. Well, Jeff Triplett may have been signaling third down on this play, but as they move the chains, Mike Shanahan and this offense has every right now to feel like it was a first down. So now they're waiting. You can see the guy at the bottom right here waving up. That's a first down. Here you go. We're going first down. They're hustling up. Now the play caller is looking at it. All right, well, let's call our first down play. Whether it's short or not, at that point, that's what you've got to see. Jeff Triplett may have been signaling third down. But that's not what happened on the field. It needed to be stopped for a measurement, if nothing else, at that point. 
And here was Shanahan. How do you not stop it for a measurement at that point? 